Welcome to the YouTube channel for Overdevest Nurseries. It's a rather cloudy, overcast day. It's fairly breezy, and the weather forecasts say there's a storm coming. But you know what? It's really nice to be out here, especially surrounded by all of these lovely plants. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back and thank you for joining us. If, on the other hand, you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, can I suggest that now might be a good time to do so? Because we're busy posting new videos all the time, featuring all sorts of interesting and exciting plants that are really good in this region. And when you view those videos, and you find the information useful and helpful, it would be nice if you could kindly share that with some of your friends, perhaps offer some comments, and also click the like button too, because that will help to make it available to other people as well. Back in the early 1990s, Dr. Elwyn Orton at Rutgers University developed a series of dogwoods, hybrid dogwoods, that enabled us to be able to enjoy all the beautiful characteristics of flowering dogwoods, but without having the concerns of having a debilitating disease called dogwood anthracnose, and also a little borer that attacks them as well. Now, as beautiful and reliable and resilient as they are, they tended to be a little on the dull side, whites and pale pinks. And those of us that are looking for more color in our garden long for ones that have a deep pink and flowers that last a long time. Then a little later on, in fact, in 1996, he started to experiment with some colored forms of Cornus Cusa that were obtained from Japan. Now, there's several different forms. There's at least four or five that I know of. Very nice, but they tended to have issues in terms of when they came out, they faded very quickly. And also some had what they called juvenility problems. That means that sometimes when you plant them, it takes many years before they start to get into the flowering mode. So Elwin decided that with his experiments, he would see if he could improve upon them. Crosses were made, seeds were sown, and seedlings were lined out at Rutgers. And then Elwin retired. And in 2008, when Dr. Tom Molinar took over, he went through some of the seedlings, selected seeds from some open pollinated plants that were there, and then in 2013, he noticed one that turned out to be rather special. And this is the result. This is Cornus Scarlet Fire, a really gorgeous little flowering dogwood that starts to flower now in early summer and will last for really an impressively long time, putting out a really beautiful show with these intensely colored bright pink star-shaped flowers. And what's interesting about it is that it inherits that resistance that I was talking about with the dogwood anthracnose and the borers, so you don't need to worry about those. And what's really interesting is that this will start flowering early in its life. In fact, in the nursery, we've got little two-year-old plants that are already starting to flower. And best of all, when you look at it here, you will see that you, as the gardener, as the garden designer, can start to do some really interesting things with it. Take, for example, here. See how it's set off in the sea of purple salvias? This is really, I think, inspirational. I had nothing to do with this. This is my boss that decided to set it off in the sea of purple, which contrasts so beautifully with these bright pink flowers. And that, for me, is one of the keys about gardening. We can grow them in the nursery, we can tell you all about what to do with them in the garden centers, but it's what you do with the plants when you take them home that really makes the difference. That's where 
imagination, vision, and perhaps inspiration of seeing impressive sights like this can set the garden off with you taking your artistry and really developing some beautiful combinations. And there's another little trick that I want to tell you about too. And that is that if you can take a plant like this and set it somewhere in a south or west facing orientation, somewhere where it's going to catch the setting sun in the evening, I can tell you, well, you will see that this is really a beautiful place to put your little scarlet fire dogwoods because there's something special about the bracts that are on these plants that reflects light in a positive way. It really positively glows with this light hitting these colorful bracts. Now you might be interested to know that while we generally refer to these as flowers, they're really not flowers as we know them. These are not petals. They are in fact colored bracts, kind of like the Ponsettia at Christmas time. The real flowers are in here in this central kind of button-like structure here in the middle of the blossom. These are really kind of modified leaves and that's why they last so long because they don't fall off like conventional petals. Star-shaped as you see, they don't overlap but they put on an impressive show when they're grown and showing off in this amount of concentration. Now, if you're thinking about growing it in your garden somewhere, it's really not that difficult. It's hardy to zone five, so it'll grow anywhere within our region. It does best in a sunny, open position. It will grow in partially shaded conditions, but you'll find there that it will stretch up a little bit, probably not be quite as floriferous as it is when it's out in full sunlight, and it might even grow towards the sun too. Outside of that, all you need is an average free draining garden soil. Good drainage is important, they just won't do in a wet clay soil. When you get it home, it'll come to you in a pot, then take the plastic pot off of course and dig a good sized hole and incorporate plenty of organic matter and then water it well until the plant becomes established. Once you get it planted, put down a layer of mulch like we have here because that will help to conserve the moisture and it'll keep the roots cooler during the summer time too. Outside of that, there really isn't a lot more for you to worry about and you can look forward to enjoying all of these gorgeous flowers. But there is one little quirk that I want to tell you about. Remember I was talking about juvenility and how some forms take many years to get to the flowering stage? Well, this one does flower early, but as a young plant, the flowers tend to be smaller and they tend to be paler colored too. Once it gets established in the site, after about two years of being in the garden site and it gets its root out into the soil, you'll notice how the flowers here will be much more concentrated, they will be larger and they will be a deeper color of pink too. So when you the, go to the garden center and you're looking at the little plants and you see the smaller flowers on there, don't worry because when you get it planted out, and then just have a little bit of patience, you'll then be able to enjoy all of these gorgeous flowers on this beautiful little tree. So there you are, some information and detail on this wonderful little flowering dogwood. Certainly one of the most impressive colored ones that we've ever grown in our nursery. And if you'd like to find out more about it, check out our website and also the Handpick for You Plants website too. On there you'll find information about it and other really good plants that do well in our region too. And of course, I would encourage you to visit your local garden centre. There's hundreds of them located right throughout our region and they're staffed by knowledgeable experts that will be able to guide you with all the details and things you require for your individual conditions right there in your neighborhood. 
this is David Wilson. Enjoy your gardening. It's good for us and it's very good for our environment too.